a digital clock, a very nice digital clock. You've probably seen these uh, on eBay before and they usually have just completely unfeasible pictures like this where they've done an amazing bit of CGI superimposition to make it look like the clock is one meter wide. It's not one meter wide. I've, I've not come across any really huge ones, but the only time your clock is going to be this size in relation to your sofa is if you have a four foot long sofa. It's not going to happen. The clock is this size. It's cuppable. It's cuppable in your hands. It has a choice of colour options, the LEDs. It's got the intensity settings here. You can set it from high to medium to low. And it's worth mentioning that it runs off a USB power supply. Now, you can either use it on a plug-in USB power supply for continuous operation. The power consumption is minute. Even with the USB power supply taken into account, it's less than two watts, uh, even at the full intensity settings. So it's only going to cost a couple of, year, a couple of pounds or dollars per year to run. I've made a video on how to set this and use all the functions. That's a separate video just to stop, you know, just to keep this one a little bit shorter. Things worthy of note, it does have a lithium 2032 button cell to actually back up. It's got a stand that you can stand up vertically or you can hook it in the wall. If you don't like this stand at the bottom, it just pops off. Uh, the current consumption is so low. I measured it at, at full intensity. It's 100 milliamps at 5 volts, so half a watt for the actual unit. At the medium setting, boop, the medium setting, it's 65 milliamps, and at the low setting, it's 22 milliamps. And if you consider that's, you know, in a dark environment, that's amply bright. Either way, a little power bank like this is actually going to run this for many, many hours. So if you had an outdoor event, you wanted a clock outdoors or in a marquee somewhere, or, you know, just some random event with no power, even if you just wanted to do posh camping, you could run it off a power bank for a considerable length of time. I shall unplug it. Uh, I shall plug it back in again just to show it has kept its settings. Right. That's not what we're here for. We're here to take it to bits. Let's get uh, everything out of the way. Oh, the USB lead is not some sort of micro USB thing. It is just a little uh, jack, barrel, jack type connector. Let's stuff these things out of the way. Let's get a screwdriver. Let's pop the back off it. That's why you're here. The whole point is that I take mine to bits so you don't have to take yours to bits. Let's pop the lithium cell out just in case that's going to interfere with disassembly. This just twists the cell, comes out like that couple of screws, and I'm kind of pondering what circuitry this is going to have in it. I noticed the lithium thing, which I've just popped a, a screw inside there. Uh, the lithium cell is kind of raised up the lithium holder. I think that might be moulded into plastic of the case. That's interesting. I wonder if this is going to be surface mount LEDs on a circuit board in the back of this. Oh, I'm going to need the spudger here. I'm going to need the spudger. Where is the spudger? Or if it's something different, is this going to be sealed? Is this actually been... No, it must be clipped together. It's clipped together, but very tightly clipped together. Oh, the sound of the video may be different. Ooh, this doesn't want to come out. Why doesn't this want to come out? Uh, I'm using a different recording device because a few of you have said you're having issues with uh, the video format, and I get the feeling that something has happened. There's been an update. Oh, it's a circuit board inside. Uh, there's been some sort of update in the phone that's kind of not recording things in a normal manner, and that just occasionally happens. It might be YouTube that's done it. It might be another... Uh, it might be the open camera that's updated. It might be the uh, phone itself, the main sort of camera algorithm, has updated, and something is amiss. So this is making crunching noises. Should this be making crunching noises? Is there another screw that I do not know about? I don't see another screw. I think it's just really well clipped together. Oh, you know what? They wouldn't have put a screw through from the front, would they? That would be so annoying if they had. Let me apply extreme finger pressure across the front to see if I can feel anything. Mm, not feeling anything, but if this doesn't come apart uh, in that area, then I'm going to peel that label off the front because there may actually be a screw from the other side. That would be super annoying but not unfeasible. So these bits are coming out easy enough. I have a sneaky feeling that there is something. I could use unreasonable force. 
like that. Yes, there was a, uh, was there a screw from the front? There was something. What the heck is that? Um, oh, it's, is it a glued pin? It's burst now, it doesn't really matter, I'm not too bad about that. Why does that have a little window there? Why does that have a little dome? Does this have remote control functionality? Anyway, what do we have here? We have a microcontroller. Uh, shall we get down closer? Focus on that. Hopefully that did focus. We've got the LEDs, or just surface mount LEDs, so you could change them. There's two per segment. There's the little crystal here. There's the microcontroller. Uh, anything on the back of this? Why have the, Why has it got those little wires going off? I mean, oh, that'll be for the power supply. Here's the little uh, switch circuit board. Here is a screw. Let's take the screw out. I kind of expected it to be a circuit board. Just the way that uh, alignment was, it just kind of makes it sensible that it would do that. Is there any other screws that I should know about here? Any more hiding? No, just this really annoying plastic thing. Is this just a friction for or have they actually glued that? Let's uh, get the pliers onto it and twist it. Oh, oh, there is a screw. But it's right down. Oh, you know what? Yeah. It's a pillar and a screw, so if you wanted to take one of these apart, you're going to have to take the label off the front. That's annoying. Because there will be a screw access port up here, right at the very edge where I couldn't get it. Okay, uh, let's zoom back out again because I'm zoomed in way too close. I, I hopefully I've not been off shot for some of that. I don't think I have. The circuit board, it's got a little peeper in the back. It's got the battery connection. It's got the... Two black connections coming on, one for the backup battery. The blacks are common here. And uh, it's got the red coming in from the external supply. Um, I could plug this in right now and we could see what it looks like with just the bare LEDs. That would be quite nice. Let's do that. Let's get the power supply in. It has a big zero ohm resistor. Is that? Oh, it's just acting as a big link. Of course, this is a single-sided circuit board. Well, that's neat. Let's plug it up. Okay, so it's reset to zero, 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 zero. It's quite nice in its own right, just as a bare circuit board, isn't it? Uh, let's try and set that to a time. Okay, so we'll set that to a number like three. Uh, we'll count down 50... 54. Would it be visible as a... Let's back out of that. Yes, you could actually use this just as... Well, hold on, I'll just turn the light off. Yeah, you could actually use this as a bare LED clock without the case. That's not bad. Uh, so what is the microcontroller? I was kind of expecting a real-time clock counter here, but maybe this thing has it built in. There's only one way to find out, and that is to zoom down on that and take a look. It says something like CA chip. CA69F16L2. Right, I'm going to have to investigate that and see if I can find a data sheet. Now, this uh, phone is theoretically... This phone is theoretically quite good. It's an old fucked up phone. But it's theoretically quite good. It should have a good camera. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, this is quite a good camera. Clue, it's a Samsung phone. A slightly smashed up Samsung phone, but a Samsung phone nonetheless. Um, yeah, that's making me think maybe I should go in the direction of Samsung, but having had my fingers burnt, looking for a new camera that does all my, my everyday carry that I can also record the videos with, and got thoroughly burnt when I bought the... Uh, the Cat S61 discovered that there's a bit of a firmware issue in it and it doesn't work with any other camera app than the one that's actually supplied with it. It always causes glitching on other apps. Perhaps Bullet could get their finger out and actually fix that. That'd be really, really nice if they tried their phone with other apps to see if it actually works. 
Uh, that may also be why it glitches when people play games in it for a fairly powerful processor. Phone mumble, mumble, mumble. Uh, what else do we have down here? 4B50. You know what? You know what? I could do what I normally do. I could take a picture of this and then we could explore the circuit together. One moment, please. Well, I have to say, this was full of lots of surprises. I mean lots of surprises. Things that I'd just taken for granted. I thought the displays would be multiplexed. They're not. I thought they'd be pulsive modulated for intensity control. They're not. But let's start with the plastic housing and then we'll go on to the circuitry. We have a couple of layers of diffusion here. We've got a sort of slightly textured clear plastic. I'm trying to get this out here, trying to get it out. I uh, should have really got this out beforehand, shouldn't I? Right, okay. We've got a textured plastic like this, a sort of diffused plastic, which goes in to act as a sort of front surface of the display. Then we've got these uh, translucent plastic panels that uh, go in front of the light boxes. The light boxes are angled. It's like classic seven-segment displays. They've got that sort of angular thing around the small channel for the LEDs at the bottom. So if I was to cover this over, you can see that is theoretically spring 23. If I then place this over, it kind of channels that up, makes it more visible. If I then place this over, then there's our solid bright number with the extra protection in the front. I guess the texture plastic in the front is largely to avoid or to reduce reflections in the front, but just add that extra layer of diffusion interesting stuff. The system has a self-test as well, which is quite interesting. Let me demonstrate the self-test. It's a bit peepy. You'll hear it peeping. If I turn the power off to it, and then I hold the mode button in, and I power it up again, it flashes the center LEDs and just counts through all the digits while making the peeper peep. You'll notice that this segment here is not populated with LEDs. It does have the provision to be populated with LEDs, and there's another LED position down here. Not sure what that's for, but I have a sneaky feeling. Hold on, I'm just going to probe that. I'm just going to probe that because I have a sneaky feeling it's in tandem with this one, so it might just be for a larger colon. Colon. <laughs> Right, okay, I'm just going to probe this. Band of a saw. We have continuity. Do we have continuity there? No, we don't. Okay, it looks like it may not be for a larger colon, maybe for some other function. Interesting, I wonder what that is. Uh, likewise, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's got that little dome there, which almost hints at a possibility for infrared translucent transparent plastic and maybe some remote control setting, time setting thing. But anyway, let us uh, get this out of the way and take a look at the circuitry. So this circuitry here is the little chunk in the middle where all the brains are. And I looked up the microcontroller. The microcontroller is a fairly standard one. Uh, it's the only data sheet I could find for it was in Chinese, which is no great surprise. It very much a sort of in China data sheet, uh, I wouldn't like to try programming this from the uh, from a translated data sheet. But I was looking at things like the I/O ports had uh, LED functionality, and I wondered if that meant that it was all going to be multiplexed from a dedicated part of the chip. Uh, we've got two comparators, we've got eight analog digital converters, we've got touch key, we've got loads of functionality. Um, it's notable that as a dedicated input for 32.768 kilohertz, which is the little clock crystal, that divides down 32,768 hertz, divides down perfectly in binary to a one hertz signal, so it's often used for timing. Uh, the voltage, it'll apparently operate down to about 1.8 volts. It does say, it says 1.8 to 5.5 volts, and then it suggests... LDO, low dropout, is that what that is? Is it a low dropout regulator on the chip itself? I'm not really sure. Or is that a low voltage detector or something? I'm not sure. The circuitry itself has just a few links, which is impressive given the actual the layout. It's got this big link, which is jumping over a lot of tracks, and then it's got these other links. I'm guessing that they may be going up to the buttons. Not really sure. No, I don't think they are. I think they're just jumping 
um, tracks where they need to for the uh, display multiplexing. Not multiplexing, it's not multiplexed. For the display drive. So what we have here, we've got the supplies come in, we've got the battery supply, we've got the common negative and we've got the positive. The positive goes straight to a 662L regulator. I'm guessing that's about 3.3 volts, didn't measure it. We have a transistor up here, which is actually driving the buzzer down here. We have various support components. We've got the two crystal, we've got crystal and the two capacitors for that, the load capacitors to provide the stable um, frequency of 32.768 kilohertz to the processor for its timing. Uh, then the other main part of the circuitry is down here and this is where it all gets a bit wild. I couldn't work it. I thought, Initially, it was going to be one transistor per display and then it was going to be multiplex and there'd be eight lines coming out here for the segment drive. It's not. Um, it turns out there's one common signal going to all every single LED in this. These uh, pairs of LEDs are all in parallel, even the colons in parallel here. And they all have a common feed going to them which comes to this 1.2 ohm resistor. There's another regulator here. That was quite hard to find information about. It's 4B50. Couldn't find a data sheet. Could find its full number, but the I could find pre plenty of sites selling them, but no data sheet. Lots of uh, data sheet uh, archive type places offering the data sheet, but I'm, I never really go into those. I should possibly go into them, but I'm... Well, who's been to those data sheet archive type places and it says, here's your data sheet. And all these adverts appear and then it says, Click here to see your data sheet. And then more adverts appear. And, oh, click here, you're almost there. More adverts appear. No, we don't have your data sheet. So I just don't bother going to them. They're a waste of time. They do probably have some data sheets, but well, mm, yeah, exactly. Uh, so the intensity control is odd. We've got another regulator here. It progressively gets warmer. I looked at the thermal imaging camera. As the output goes up, I'm not sure if it's just a uh, dedicated regulating a voltage or if it's actually getting stepped up because not uh, should I say it's actually regulating it could be regulating the voltage um I'm not sure if it's set up as a current regulator no information but I can tell you this at low setting the drive to these two transistors is off at the medium setting this transistor is turned on and at the high setting this one's turned off and that one's turned on and they seem to be setting a resistor tap system here that may be affecting this regulator. Not sure what's actually coming along because this transistor here on the output wasn't heating up unless it's designed for gating all the LEDs on and off. That could actually be for gating them. I don't think they really, do they all flash at any particular point in time other than when they're being tested? I don't think so. But it's very odd. It's quite a complex bit of circuitry for intensity control. And it's nice that the displays are all driven. They're, they're direct drive displays. There is no flicker. Basically, it's one pin per segment and this microcontroller is driving those LEDs solidly so you won't get flicker. And even when it's dimmed down, you're not going to get that, that shimmer. It's a really nice design. It's also that kind of alludes to scalability if you wanted to then use this chip to drive much bigger displays. But uh, quite neat. Quite neat indeed. I do like this. Um, I also like the fact you can take it apart and if an LED fails you can get this out of, you can desolder an LED, you could theoretically solder another one in. If you wanted to customise the clock completely, you could have like three different, uh, should I say four different colours for your LEDs, that might work. Or is it going to require they're all matched? Because this is a single current limiting. That is a, an issue. Yeah, There's a possibility that if you used differing voltages, that, you know, the the fact that it's all one current limit suggests that, you know, they're going to have to all be matched at a voltage. But it's interesting. Very neat. And works quite well. It's got a date, 15, 12, 2017. Some was working right up to Christmas there. But there we go. It's neat. I like these clocks. They are. Uh, better than expected. Quite smart little things indeed. And if you want to see how to set this clock, how to program it, I shall put a link in the description down below to the my guide to actually set it and setting all the functions in this. Uh, if you want to get one yourself and take a shortcut to actually finding out all its functionality. But other than that, uh, neat unit. I really like this a lot.